Welcome back to the Deep Blue Sea. I have good news for you. The official Mermaid mod pack is available on CurseForge. On the CurseForge app, you can easily play the mod pack by searching for Love Stars Mermaid Craft and installing it. There's a link in the description too. To set up your mermaid playthrough, load up a new world. Select either the Merling or Siren Origin. I personally play as the Merling. Then give yourself a sea necklace. This can be equipped on the necklace bobble slot. You can also customize your mermaid tail by dyeing the sea necklace in the crafting grid. Lastly, find an ocean and begin your journey. I wish you luck! Now, let's continue our 100 day mermaid adventure. We officially begin day 21. There's still a lot of work to be done on the dome I built, so let's get to it. Let's get rid of this dead coral. I start building the first floor inside the dome, the entry level. I get to use the waterfalls as elevators, which is pretty cool. I also make a waterfall in each corner of the dome. Now it's time to make an upper floor, this time for the farm. Although I'm missing one important part, the dirt. Time to collect some. This was oddly therapeutic. Now that I have enough dirt for a lifetime, it's time to place it down. I'm so excited to actually grow crops underwater. How cool is that? Luckily, the waterfalls are sufficient to wet the soil across the entire surface, which is a big plus. And done. Let's get the seeds now, but not before a quick nap. This bucket is so efficient at breaking the grass, which means I can get loads of seeds while keeping my mermaid form hydrated. Okay, enough of that. I want to get back to the ocean. Much better. I am officially a mermaid farmer. This place definitely needs better lighting if I want to grow my wheat. Back downstairs, I want to make a mini terrarium inside here with some greenery, but I realize I don't have any grass or silk touch to get said grass. Well, this sucks. I guess I'll just use moss instead. It'll be a grass substitute until I can get a grass block. Maybe from an enderman drop or something. The moss looks really nice to be honest. I like it a lot! Let's see if I can grow a tree. Hell yes! Well, I gotta get some more dirt to fill in this terrarium thing. I'll leave this bit open so I can have a nice entrance. Okay, the fact that I can't have any grass inside my terrarium is really bugging me. I go up to the surface on a risky mission to kill an enderman, and hopefully steal some grass blocks. What the he- Okay. I was getting ganged up by so many different monsters, and I unfortunately didn't see any endermen before the sun came up. Damn it. Welp, I guess we can just use the moss. Now I can finally place my beautiful flowers I picked earlier. Okay, let's see what's- <gasps> Oh no! Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Dude. What the hell? Dude, that freaking creeper just blew a giant hole into my dome. I can't believe I forgot to light it up down here! 
I guess I got used to not having to do that underwater. Well, it's time to do a little bit of rebuilding. Luckily, I had some spare glass in my shell house. It's super dark in here. Lesson learned, I hope. Back to business. I'm making another floor under here. Not sure for what yet, but I'll figure it out. I do need the extra space whenever I decide to adopt more creatures against their will. That does remind me, Lava Cake deserves to move into the dome now. I think the terrarium floor will be a nice change of environment for her. It's different than where she came from, but hopefully she can grow to appreciate it. We have another room down there. I'm not really sure what to put in there just yet, but we'll figure it out. Ow. What? What hit me? I was just thinking about what I need to build next. Um, you know what? Oh, we need a cow farm. Um, right. So, well, we have to stick to the underwater theme. So how the hell am I going to get underwater cows? I really need to get leather for enchanting, but I'm kind of stumped. After a while of thinking, I get an interesting idea, to say the least. All I know is that I'm going to get underwater cows one way or another. There we go. Okay, so- ooh, I- <laughs> Okay, so, our basic cow enclosure is ready. Now I just need to get some leads. Getting those cows under the water and into a small container is not going to be easy. This reminds me, I honestly haven't seen any cows since I killed that one herd a while ago. Oops. Manchagora! A cute Manchagora appears, and luckily, I was able to befriend her. I'm going to go for a quick stop by the local mushroom house to grab some resources. I also come across some Alliums, my favorite Minecraft flower. I found the remaining cow from my previous slaughter. Unfortunately, I only left one, so I gotta go find another one after this. I sat down my Mandragora during this without thinking, and I completely forgot about her for the remainder of this video, so I'll have to make sure to pick her up next time. Okay, let's go, don't drown. Come in here! Come in here! Cow! Come on, come on, come on. You can do it, you can do it. Oh shoot, don't drown. Oh god, okay, maybe I have to make like a trap door. So, I officially almost killed my one and only cow. Let's try to do this another way. This water will protect the cow from fall damage. 
Okay, hopefully this works better. Come here, cow. If you die, I'm killing you. Yes! It worked! Just gotta find another one. Oh god. Okay, let's go find a cow. I gotta look for some new land to search at this point. Oh my god, there's another temple! And so close to the first one too! I gotta check it out. What the- Dude, what just happened? I didn't even go inside that thing! I swear, these temples are actually rigged. Well, I head inside anyway because I know there's a secret room that doesn't get blown up. Uh-oh, creepers! I'm not mad about the loot, even if the rest got blown up. Well, let's get out of here. I still need that damn cow. God, I literally walk around for ages without seeing a single cow. I eventually spot an interesting looking village and decide to stay for the night. At least I got to see a beautiful rainbow. Well, I can't stay here for long. Time to keep moving. This view is beautiful. These mushroom houses have become basically a truck stop for me. I've been wandering around for ages by now, so it's nice to see a welcoming spot for a change. In other news, I found this epic dungeon. Whoa! Oh my god, these dungeons never fail to amaze me. I mean, I'm not going in there, but it's cool! I find it very ironic how I managed to find this before a cow. I've been traversing very hot climate biomes up to this point, so seeing this plain old forest gave me a sign of hope. There was a savanna right behind the forest, but I know for a fact cows can still spawn here. I want to go back to the ocean already. <gasps> cows! 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 Oh my gosh, finally. This was the happiest I've ever been to see a freaking cow. I decided to make a few extra leads with the rope I found in the temple so I can take a few more cows home. Save myself a bit of trouble breeding them. Off we go. Let's hope these guys don't get tired of swimming. Oh! I see you up there. Don't think you're escaping me. I have an extra lead, so I might as well use it. Now they can all come home with me, and never touch the land again. You know, transporting animals across the ocean is a lot easier and faster than on land. Okay, we're finally home. Now I gotta bring them under. I'm gonna do one at a time just to be safe. I'm so happy it worked. Now I'm one step closer to getting enchanted diamond armor. I'm going to need some serious gear if I ever want to defeat the ghost of Captain Cornelia, but we'll discuss that later. Now I'm just going to make sure lava cake is still alive and then harvest my wheat. I want to place down these flowers. I'm sure it makes lava cake happy. Oh, 
Okay, now that our cow project is complete, I want to make some more cool builds. This time, something within this cave. I want to eventually expand my living space so I can have more room for all my equipment that I'll need along my 100 day journey. So, let's get to work. I again don't really have a solid plan, but underwater building is all about experimentation and having fun for me. Before I start building, I'm gonna have to get some more materials. I head over to the sea monument, then get distracted by this glowing fish. Unfortunately, it's hostile and attacks me. <laughs> it even breaks a piece of my armor. I try to fight it off, but this quickly escalates into something way worse. Oh god, that freaking fish riding it around is so dangerous. I try to kill this stupid glowing fish, but it's surrounded by drowns. The hitbox on this thing is so goddamn hard to hit! Finally, it's dead! Jeez, that was ridiculous! I'm just gonna mine on this end of the monument and hope I don't get disturbed. Uh, of course. I have to swim back home to get some milk buckets. At least I have some underwater cows for my underwater milk. Back to the monument. For now, I'm just gonna grab some stuff from this thing instead. It looks like the back of the monument is safe, at least for now. I just hope to avoid the mining fatigue effect, because I really don't want to go inside and kill the Elder Guardians. Okay, so this isn't working anymore. I drink my last milk and hope for the best. This corner seems to be in the clear. Dang it, not for long. I went back home to organize and remove my effect. For now, let's just focus on the build. I did manage to get quite a bit of prismarine. Hi. <laughs> the scrimp. <laughs> As I was saying, I was thinking of calling this place my mermaid lair. It's not going to be my house, but I do plan on building a bigger house for myself later on. Something more like a mermaid castle or whatever. So, this layer is going to be more of my working area. I'll probably move my brewing stuff over here as well as set up my enchanting room. I'm not gonna lie, figuring out what and how to build in the ocean while sticking to the mermaid theme has been a big challenge. I wouldn't consider myself the most creative person, especially not when I'm building in survival, so my ideas have been pretty limited. Luckily at this point, I did manage to get some pretty cool ideas in my head of what I want to build for this mermaid world. I just hope I can actually bring them to life, you know? Dude, I freaking love octopuses. Anyway, I am going to have to mine some amethyst for my build. Okay, enough of that. Don't mind me, just doing a little bit of seaweed farming. Back to work.
Okay, so I went back to the monument to get more blocks, this time in peaceful mode. I know, I know, but seriously, I'm tired of getting ambushed and fatigued every two seconds in this place. Just let me have this one. Back home. I was actually able to craft one sea lantern with some of the stuff I got from killing guardians, I think. I'll save that for later. Not sure what to do with it yet. Honestly, this build is really abstract. I was going for something a little different in my head, but honestly, I think it turned out pretty cool. Very natural yet mystical. This is the point where I figure out that I can bone meal stuff underwater to grow seagrass and corals. I gotta try this out. Dude, this looks amazing. How did I never know this existed? Gotta play some more glow looking too. But seriously, I went a little crazy with the seagrass. I was hoping for coral. It's supposed to grow in warm oceans. Hmm, I'm not a fan of all the stone around here. Let me go get some sand. Man, I love collecting sand. Not gonna lie, I think this looks way better. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get the corals to grow. <sighs> sad face. Well, if I can't have pretty corals, I can at least find some pretty sea pickles. I ended up finding diamonds before that, though. What the hell just happened? I just lost half of my health? I think I lagged or something. Dude, even more diamonds! They're so common underwater! Okay, that's just ridiculous. I've been having a hard time finding any sea pickles outside my home reef, honestly. Well, that's all of them. It's day 29, what else can I do? I'll probably have to grab some more warped wood before I continue building, so I guess I'll just do that. Well, here we go again. Don't mind me crossing the worst bridge placed above lava ever constructed. Gotta make sure I have my umbrella on, you know, in case it rains. I found this warped mushroom girl, but unfortunately I didn't bring any rotten flesh to tame her. Oh well. I'll just collect some warped wood and get out of here.
Oh my god, guys, it's a rare warped girl. She's so shiny! Okay, okay, I can skip out on a regular warped girl, but the rare ones are so hard to come by. I'll have to take her home. It's day 30, so my time is almost up. I'm like totally freaking out. I'm not even thinking straight. Just trying to trap her in some hole so I can go grab some rotten flesh. Okay, there we go. That wasn't so hard if I just turned on my brain. Let's get out of here and be really quick because I'm not sure if she's going to despawn or not. Rotten flesh and tiny bed acquired. Go, go, go! Okay, so my game crashed as I was trying to put her in a tiny bed, and I didn't realize the recording stopped until now. Oops. Anyway, you didn't miss much. I just brought her home and introduced her to Lava Cake. I'm not sure what to name her though, maybe you can leave a name suggestion in the comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Be on the lookout for the next episode and enjoy the mod pack! Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more episodes! Bye!